What's up, everybody? Welcome to the JJ Peller Podcast. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you some concepts that could totally transform the way you build relationships personally and professionally. Why and how is what I'll answer for you in this episode of the podcast. So I'm excited that you're here with me. And here's the thing. So many people have an interest, at the very least, in building really strong relationships personally and professionally, whether with a spouse, significant other, partner, children, other family members, friends within the community, and professionally within their team, with their clients, with the people that lead them, with the people they lead and manage. And so I know for certain that our ability to connect and communicate as effectively as possible is vitally important for our success in literally every area of life. And have you ever found yourself in this situation um, where maybe, just maybe, you have maybe in an intimate or very close personal relationship, someone seems really angry and they're mad at you and, and frustrated and you can sense it. They may not actually directly say it to you, but you can sense something ain't right here. And eventually you just come out and ask. You say, what's going on? You seem mad, you seem angry, but I didn't say anything wrong. And what does this person say back to you? They maybe get a little bit frustrated and irritated and give you the face to look. And they say, <clears throat> it's not what you said. It's, can you finish the sentence? That's right. How you said it. It's not what you said. It's how you said it. How you say things matters big time. How you say things is going to determine if someone feels connected to you or distant from you. If someone wants to be around you or wants to find a way to get away from you as often as possible. So what you need to understand is that what you say matters. It's important for sure, but how you say things is the bigger deal. And certainly you may have been introduced at some point in the past to the study that Dr. Morabian did back in the 1960s at UCLA, where he and his team of researchers wanted to find out what all makes up one's ability to effectively communicate emotions from one person to another person. And so their findings showed back in this research from, I think it was like 1967, it showed some strong evidence that there are three specific areas which are vital and have weightings for how we communicate feelings from one person to the next, which at the end of the day, by the way, is really all we're communicating is feelings and emotions. Like, yes, we wanna think that we're communicating ideas, which is true, but the most important thing we communicate our feelings and emotions because we want other people to feel a certain way when we connect and communicate with them. And so their research said there are three areas that are most important in communicating emotions or feelings from one person to the next. And those three areas are words, literally the words you use when you communicate, tonality, so how you use your voice, the sound, the volume, the pitch, the tenor, all of those modalities of how your voice quality comes through. And third is physiology or basically how you use your body, how you use your face, everything that's nonverbal, basically. And I refer to this, the two that are most important. Oh, but maybe first I should tell you what are the weightings for each of these. So the weightings for each of these came out as follows. Do you know which one was most? Can you guess the percent of weighting that words have in that study that they showed in terms of the ability to communicate feelings or emotions from one person to the next? What percentage from zero to 100? How much weight did it have? Any guesses? That's right, 7%. 7%. Any guesses in terms of uh, tonality and, and the weighting that tonality had? So obviously there's only 93% left. Do the math, 100 minus 7. You've got 93% left. What was the percentage that tonality plays in a weighting in terms of communication of emotions and feelings? Any guesses? No, no, yes, no. What are your guesses? Here's what they found. They contributed 38% of the weighting of communicating emotions and feelings from one person to the next to tonality. And if you're doing the math at home, you know that that leaves 55% left in that 100% spectrum for physiology and how you move your body, use your facial expression. So 55% of anyone's, your ability to communicate a message and use emotions and get feelings across to another person, it makes up 55% your use of physiology. And so the reason this is fascinating to me is as you look at these numbers, it's easy then to see that it's not about what you say. It's not the words. It's how you say it. And I call this the 93%. I call it the 93% because the nonverbal makes up 
93%. Your tonality and your physiology make up 93% of your ability to communicate emotions and feelings from yourself to another person or a group of people. And so the reason I think this is fascinating is so many people focus on the words, which is great. There's all kinds of books out there that say, here's the exact words to use, or here's the phrases, or here's the language. Like those are helpful. I know there are lots of people that are like, just tell me what to say. And that's fantastic. But guess what? If you want to be the most effective communicator possible, it ain't about what you say. It's not the words. Now words matter. Cause as I've always said, as I've gone around and spoken for different groups and companies around the country, I said, look, if, if, if words didn't matter at all, then you could say whatever you want and people would fall in love with you. Or you could say whatever you want and you wouldn't get punched in the face. But the reality is there are certain words that you use and it will get someone to fall in love with you. And there are certain words that you'll use that will get someone to at least want, if not actually do, punch you in the face. And so I bring that up to say like words are important and I get that. And I love words. I'm, a fascin I'm fascinated with language. And I know that the power of communication comes from your tonality of your voice and your physiology, how you use your face and your body movements. And so if you can start to lock this in as something that you understand as powerful and vital for your ability to communicate with another person, then you'll start taking relationships to another level. Because the example I gave is, I try to use a little humor in that because it is that example, that classic example of maybe a, um, a couple who are going through a challenging time and communicating. And one of the couple says, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. And then they get in a whole thing and they got to figure it out, blah, blah, blah. But my point is, it happens often within intimate relationships, but it also happens in work relationships and professional relationships. And how often do we actually consider how we say things in professional settings? And so I know for myself, even it's something I still have to work on, even though I'm like, I, I think about it quite often. There are so many moments when I totally, totally am rushing or I'm feeling cold, meaning like my, my emotional intelligence isn't present. And so I just say whatever, like I say the words and I don't bring the right emotion or tonality or energy. And that's where the superpower is energy. Are you bringing the right kinds and qualities and intensities of energy into every conversation that you have? And so I believe I'm a, I, for me, energy is my superpower period. Like I think all of us have multiple superpowers, but the thing that gets commented on more than anything in my life is my energy. I'll leave a conversation and people are like, man, I want some of that energy. Or they'll like feel a sense of excitement and enthusiasm and inspiration because I bring the right kinds and qualities and intensities of energy into conversations with people. And there's all kinds of things behind the energy thing, which may or may not be my very next book that I write. Um, but I bring this up to say the energy that you bring to a conversation matters because the energy that you bring to an interaction with another human is the feeling that you leave someone with. Like how often people will often say, not just they'll say how you made them feel, but they'll also say, oh, she showed up with great energy or he has great energy or he has really great positive energy or, or she has like this calming energy or this, this connect, like people resonate with the word energy. Many people do. And so the energy, if you can think about it this way, if it's helpful, think about the energy that you bring to every interaction with every person you meet personally and professionally and it can transform the way you interact. So if you have the right energy, the right tonality, the right facial expressions, the right body language. And I believe all of that stems from energy. Like your, your tonality, you got to have enough energy to move your, your voice tonality and you've got to condition it and train it. But you also like really got to have the right energy because if you don't have enough energy, it's very easy to get monotone and just stay right here and talk to people like this. And maybe you jump up one level, but then you come right back to here and it doesn't move people. You don't connect with people. And by the way, this isn't always about being super high energy. Sometimes it's about making sure you meet people where their energy needs to be met. So like if someone's sad or upset or frustrated, like you don't want to bring it. Whoa, I just shook the table. You don't want to bring all this crazy energy. You want to bring it a different level and quality and kind of energy where you're having a conversation around, Hey, I feel you. Like, tell me what's going on. What's happening? What are you feeling right now? Tell me about what happened. And you get curious and you have more of this sincere, in-depth, like connected energy. But sometimes you got to shake people awake and just bring a crazy amount of energy. And sometimes it's somewhere in between. But my point is your energy will dictate your vocal qualities. It just will. Like the energy that you intend to show up with and do show up with 
will absolutely influence your tone of voice and it'll influence how much of your body do you use, how much movement, how much of your facial expression. I've once heard it said that facial, most people's face is the most underutilized real estate on the face of the planet because people don't use their face. Now, some might say some people use it a little too much, but then again, I'd rather err on the side of using it more and letting my energy shine through and people feel that than just sitting here like this, being monotone and not moving my face at all besides barely my lips and my tongue so that people can actually hear what I'm saying. Like, look, everybody makes choices. How much energy, enthusiasm, passion are you gonna bring into yourself so you can shine it through into everyone that you have a conversation with so that your tonality and how you say things with your body language, your facial expressions comes through, it matters. So the next time you think about really being persuasive and having a great conversation and connecting with someone that's important to you, either someone you've known for a long time or a brand new connection personally or professionally, remember, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And if this message has resonated with you or inspired you or encouraged you, or you found it beneficial in any kind of way, would you please consider sharing this message with someone that you care about who could also benefit from this message? I'd love to be able to reach more people just like you who need messages just like that to feel inspired, encouraged, excited, and energized and equipped with the right ideas, mindset, strategies for peak performance, motivation, and success in and in every area of life. And by the way, if you've loved, loved, loved this message, then I'd invite you to join my brand new mastermind community called Peller University. It's a place to feel uplifted, inspired, and encouraged and supported by many other members. And it's growing. And you'll get trainings from me every month. And you'll have live workshops with me every single month month to keep you encouraged and empowered with ideas and mindset tools and strategies very similar to what you're hearing here but more in depth on a more consistent basis served specifically to you and the other members of Peller University Mastermind Community. So consider joining and again if this message served you share it with somebody that could also be served by it. And friend whatever you're going after refuse to quit and just keep going because if you do great things can happen. Friend you got this.